shot just too early. Slightly too early. I know a better way we can do this though. We're gonna try dropping from max height at the exact same time. Technically, we should hit the ground at the exact same time, and it should be a draw. You ready? Okay, uh, I'm gonna drop all my loot and mats, because I don't know like what it takes into account. Okay, I'm dropping everything over here. Okay, so we should both have 100 HP, no max, 100, no item. Yeah. yeah, literally exactly that. I wanna stand like exactly the same square as you or whatever. No, don't take your hand off the keyboard. Okay. Off the mouse as well. Are you ready? I'm not looking down, I'm just looking straight at you. I'm ready to see who wins this. <laughs> Surely you don't drop first. Ready? I'm ready. Oh, I'm low with it! What? What? How does that happen? What? 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 How, what? How? How does that happen? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Myth, we are going to save the trees to see if it's possible to put out fires using chug play. That's right. It sounds like it should work, but I guess we're going to have to try and see. I must find chug splashes. Just use it. For that one. Yeah, for sure. 
show because I want to see if I can get the worst or the best skin set up in the game. So let's do this. I don't know what this skin is. I'm taking down the Slurpy Swan. This one is going to be an interesting one. We can only use blue guns. Oh, what is that? What is this one? It's Star Wars. What What kind of meds is that? Because Star Wars is, is its own thing. Why is there a llama there? We have to figure out how we want to do this one. So the glider is matte. So maybe... Maybe for mats, I can use anything. For this game in particular. I need to find a blue gun. Blue gun! That's not blue. Don't you dare stitch me up like this game. Ah, oh, it's gonna freaking do it to me, isn't it? I'm getting out of here. I'm looking for a blue gun. And for the mats, we can use anything because I got the... Somehow the... Oh, we got a gun. Bros. I'm Frank. This is a video review of the new Alpha Strike series by Nerf. This is a super, super budget series. All of these blasters are ridiculously cheap. Let's get into the review. Thank you, Thank you. 
beauty products because recently your plastics have become are becoming way more expensive, like the Nemesis is hundred dollars. So Prometheus is two hundred dollars. Sure you can buy it for one sixty on Amazon, but the MSRP is two hundred US dollars. So a lot of you guys have to come to the beauty and say I like the plastic, but I can't spend that much money on it. This budget line is super inexpensive. This jewelry skin is two ninety nine. I've never seen anything with the Nerf logo sell for less than three dollars. I didn't actually I thought it was a typo when they sent me this price. But no, they're for realsies, two ninety nine. Three dollars for a jolt reskin. I believe this whole series is supposed to compete with uh, off-brand Nerf blasters. Their biggest selling point was their price. Like the Dart Zone blasters have a lot of blasters that look a lot like these ones. But of course, when you buy a Dart Zone blaster, it's not a Nerf blaster, so it doesn't feel quite as nice. This isn't budget line, so these blasters are a little cheaper in feel. But it's a pretty cool series. I'll review the blasters one by one right after the unboxing montage. I promise. <laughs> no other external features. 
blasters are very, very minimal. No extra gizmos. And it's very lightweight, so even if it were super uncomfortable, it's not like a ton of leaning into your hand in a bunch. So that is the same blaster. has no sense that the visual pack and the combo pack can be two blasters, four target pads, and there's also a bottle of them. It's two blasters, four target pads, and 12 darts. That is the same and I love these little target things after my fire. So that is the same blaster. Like these clear stands, they're painted clear, so you can't even see them. Like when Garvey and Levy owns them. Next blaster is the Cobra. There's another super cool thing. Stinger, Fang, Cobra. I don't know the name of that. It comes with something cool. Similar in a way to a strong arm if you need a carrot. Handle is styled in the same way as the Cobra in this blaster. It, it looks like it's designed to go fast, like a speed hole, like it's super lightweight and thin. And the blaster is noticeably light. Even with the rotation back, I'm not really sure how they pulled that off. But to prime, you pull back on the style prime handle like that. Prime works pretty well. And the cylinder revolves on the prime. It has a very smooth trigger for the length of the memory, which is not really it. If you had to like halfway pull to align the cylinder, you get screwed up all the time to stop it. Blaster is broken when they just didn't really shoot it. This is just the I'm in one of those things today. Purchase the unit that we can the blaster for these target halves and 12 darts for $10, which isn't quite as cheap as these other blasters. They have to be stronger than about $10. I don't think anybody's actually seen it. There's still a fun blaster, and I think the best addition to this will be a strong arm for 50 size. There's a lot of people that really dig that. I don't have any issues with the strong arm priming or the disruptor priming handle, but the key size is really like it. It's not as modern because it's easy to pull back a gigantic load on the key. from behind. Oh, 
The shadow tracker. In why did you even buy that? It's insane, yeah. If you're good, if you know how to use it. But if you get third party, you're dead. Because it's a pistol, and especially if a kid literally aims it, maybe, then it doesn't even have the shadow tracker. You're like, no, I'm good. I'm about to destroy him on my level up. Even though it's just, even though it's a like, green and then it's gold. Oh! It's got destroyed, kid. Come in! I saw your fuck. <sighs> there we go! We just got destroyed! Destroy this lobby! Let's go. Let's go. There, kids. Kids, yeah. I get you want to kill the kid who's the sweaters in the lobby. I literally killed 12 kids. Easy. Mm, 22. Tied him with the shadow tracker. I shot, I literally, can I let go of the ball enough to kill <laughs> Yes, I bet him! Let's go, bet him! Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm <laughs> I would have killed him, but when I was aiming my sniper, it immediately suddenly made me go up straight towards him, so I was just going to hang boy. Fucking take that. Go, go take my pop. You didn't even take the purple shot in. You didn't. You're so bad. I don't even take the amber sniper or Oh my god, this kid's garbage! He doesn't even put me. Blaster and perhaps the cost, you know, maybe you want to purchase this, but the quadrat is still what I would prefer. But I do this for a living. I have pretty much every nerf blaster that's been released in the last 10 years. So naturally, I gravitate towards super high quality. But if you're on a budget, you're in a very different mindset when you're at the toy store trying to, you know, fill out your arsenal. And I totally get that. This is a phenomenal performing blaster. These blasters, except this one, you might just take this down. Now I can talk about everything in front of me. These blasters work well, but the fit and finish is not really worthy of the classic nerf me. That's why they have a full out the strike series. Greetings, fans! Michael here, and welcome to the newest installment of my Pokemon Types Then vs. Now series, where 
I go over the history and all of the changes that a particular Pokemon type has gone through over the course of the main series of Pokemon games. Today I'm going to be focusing on the Poison type, a type that has gone through a lot more changes than I think most people realize. And that covers all the intro stuff, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please. Let's start up the first Let's dive into, haha, HSI, Grunty Boy. Hello, Grunty Boy. What did you come here to steal today, but actually end up spectacularly failing to do so? Oh, I succeeded this time. I perfectly timed my heist to steal your Raycon earbuds right before they sponsored this video. So now, you can't properly do your integration. Let me guess, you stole someone else's thinking they were mine. I'm coming back. I'll show you that I still have mine. Reach into my pocket right now and pull out my Raycon. Where'd you boy give them back? And why would I do that? With these Raycon earbuds, I get six hours of playtime, more bass, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a nice compact design that gives me a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. I know, they're great, so give them- Complain all you want, I can't hear you. They come in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of ear fit options, and the lack of dangling wires or stems is phenomenal. As you can see, these things are really And also, it's nice to not have any annoying dangling wires while I'm out and about. You know? Come push me, boy. I'm obviously aware of how great Raycon earbuds are. I have been using mine regularly for the last year since I got them. I've been using them to work out, start some new hobbies, do some work around oh my the God. house. You are so them, lucky. Which is why I am very upset you stole them from me and I'm going to turn them around. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Ugly? We look the same. Look, man, I'm sorry, but I could never willingly give up these pristine. <laughs> that are half the price of premium audio brands, but don't sacrifice any of the quality. You know, it's no wonder celebrities like Snoop Dogg and, of course, myself, are obsessed with Raycon. I told you I already know all of this. I also know they have a 45-day free return policy because they are that committed to giving their customers a great experience start to finish. I mean, I certainly had a good customer experience. You didn't buy that! I can see that you're very so, it would you feel any better if I told you that if you go to buyraycon.com slash MHATV, it's linked in the description below, that you can get 15% off your order. I prefer you just gave mine back. I cannot deny that I love them so much that I would buy them again. Wait, this is again. Oh, shut up. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, don't come back and... Buddy. Thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring. And now let's dive in. Poison type Pokemon, then versus now. We'll start things off with go generation fight. one, which was the most poisonous generation. It introduced an astounding 33 different poison type Pokemon, which makes it not only the most abundant type in Gen 1, but it's also the most amount of Pokemon of a single type introduced in a single generation ever. Second place is 32 water types in Gen 1, third place is 29 water types in Gen 3, and then it drops down to 22 normal types in Gen 1. I think the main reason there was such an incredibly large amount of poison type Pokemon in Gen 1 is that almost half the bug types, more than half the grass types, and literally all of the ghost types were also poison type. And then there were lots of other poison type Pokemon on top of all of those. Let's list all of the fully evolved poison type Pokemon introduced in Gen 1. And there are a lot. Venusaur, Beedrill, Arbok, Nidoqueen, Nidoking, Golbat, Vileplume, Venomoth, Victory Bell, Tentacruel, Muck, Gengar, and Weezing. Clearly there's no shortage of them, which makes me find it so strange that Koga, the poison type specialist, has teams that are just chock full of repeats. Like, what are you doing, man? You have so many options. Variety is the spice of life. So Gen 1 was unusual for the poison type because of just the sheer number of them. But it was also unusual because its type matchups were different. This was the type chart for the poison type in Gen 1. It was resisted by itself, ground, rock, and ghost, which is still the case today. 
and that is the only segment of this chart that is the same now as it was back then. Well, that and Poison not being immune to any other types. The individual matchups that were the same are Poison being strong against Grass, being weak to Ground and Psychic, and then resisting itself, Fighting, and Grass. The biggest difference between then and now was the Poison type's relationship with the Pog. Poison was both super effective against Pog and weak to it. This is the only instance in all of main series Pokemon history of two different types being super effective against each other. Today, Bug and Fighting are two different types that resist each other, but spoiler alert, in the modern type chart, there are no two different types that can super effectively hit each other. Fun fact, this means that in Generation 1, Paris and Parasect had three four times weaknesses, being four times weak to fire, flying, and poison. This is the only time any Pokemon has ever had more than two four times weaknesses, since in the modern type chart, it's not possible to have more than two without involving abilities. These are all of the poison type moves introduced in Gen 1, and prior to Gen 4, all of the attacking moves were physical. So special attacking poison types were not very happy Pokemon, especially Gengar. Gengar's best stat is its special attack, and both ghost and poison moves were all physical prior to the split. As you can see from this list, none of the moves are particularly impressive, the strongest being Sludge at only 65 base power. I suspect that Poison wasn't made super offensively strong because its primary strategy was supposed to be poisoning the enemy, or maybe even bad poisoning using Toxic, so that could be the reason. It also could just be because... Gen 1 is terrible, and they sucked at balancing things back then. It was their first try. We'll cut them some slack, but... Ugh. The Gen 1 Poison-type specialist was the already mentioned Koga, but Agatha is basically a Poison specialist as well. She's technically a Ghost specialist, but since her three Ghosts are Poison-types, and then her next two are also Poison-types, she's got a whole squad of Poison-type Pokémon. One final note about the Poison-type in Gen 1 is that they cannot be poisoned! Would be weird if they could be. Well, they could be, by Twin Needle, because it's a bug-type move, but all the other ways don't work. But then came Generation 2, a generation where Game Freak basically went, so you know this really abundant type that we created that we clearly really liked because we made so many of them? What if we made it garbage? Ah, so like a poison-type Pokemon that's based on trash or maybe a trash bag. No, I mean like making it back. Oh my god, you just split with top! I'm trying to use I'm trying to be not sweaty by just you being sweaty as my own little work, my only shotgun I can use in battle is the lever action. And I can't do it because everyone just splays with tack and you literally drop in circle. Poison definitely got a better deal than Bug in regards to that specific change, but overall, the Poison type got screwed in Gen 2. Its advantage over Bug was replaced with doing nothing to the new Steel type. That wasn't weak to Steel, but the fact that it went from being strong against two types to now only being strong against one and having a type it can't do anything against is brutal. I believe that under the Gen 2 type chart, which remained in place all the way until Generation 6, Poison was either the second worst or flat out worst offensive type. Only strong against one other type, Grass, a type that has a lot of other weaknesses, and then it was resisted by four types and couldn't touch a bit. To compare it to some others, Dragon also was only strong against one type itself, but only one type resisted it, Steel. Normal isn't strong against anything, but it had two resistances instead of four, while also not able to touch one other type. So I'm not really sure whether Poison or Normal was the worst offensive type, but I can say with confidence that the two of them were at the bottom of the barrel. Only one Poison type move was added in Gen 2, Sludge Bomb, which was actually a nice addition since it gave the type an attack with actually respectable power. Unfortunately, only
Grimer and Muck learned it by level up, with all the others that could learn it needing a single-use TM. So in a legit playthrough, you can't really spread it around. After the absurd amount of poison types they added in Gen 1, they really scaled it back for Gen 2 and only added four. Spinarak, Ariados, Crobat, and Quillfish. Crobat is great, very strong Pokemon, but the others are not all that impressive. Gen 2 had one new poison specialist, but two total. The new one was Janine, Koga's daughter who takes over the Fuchsia City gym because Koga moved up to the elite. They don't know any poison type moves though, so he definitely leaned into the ghost thing. Then came Generation 3, which did little to assist the downtrodden poison type. There was no changes to the type chart, and the new poison type Pokemon added were not all that impressive. The new fully evolved poison type Pokemon were Dustox, Roselia, Swalot, and Survivor. The overall weakest generation of poison type Pokemon so far, based on average base stat total. I love Survivor, I think it's really cool, but it is not very good. There's a lot of Pokemon like that in Gen 3. Really upsetting for a Hoenn baby like me. Who cares about the stats? Come on, guys, why weren't they stronger? Only two new moves were added, Poison Fang and Poison Tail, neither of which are very good or strong. Poison Fang has the interesting quirk of having a chance to badly poison the target instead of just regular poisoning, but it's too weak to make much of a difference. Also starting in Gen 3 and going until Gen 7 when Corrosion is added, Poison-type Pokémon cannot be poisoned at all. In Gens 1 and 2, Twin Needle could poison a poison-type Pokemon, but not even more than Gen 3. So Gen 3 didn't do much of anything to help Oh my god! But Gen 4 did help it a bit. The biggest impact was the physical special spread. Prior to Diamond and Pearl, all poison-type attacks were physical moves. But then starting in Gen 4, special attacking poison types like Gengar and Bioplume could actually make proper use of their offensive poison type capabilities. Just using Sludge Bomb, but still. And the physical attacking poison types weren't screwed over either, because they added actually a lot of physical poison type moves for them to make use of. Cross Poison, Poison Jab, and Gunk Shot were three new physical poison type moves that are all very solid. With Cross Poison having decent power but a nice secret rate, Poison Jab being solid power with a chance to poison, and Gunk Shot being very powerful in exchange for answers. Additionally, there were two new status moves, Gastro Acid to suppress the target's ability, and the new entry hazard, Toxic Spikes. Gastro Acid isn't used much, but Toxic Spikes has and continues to make a big impact in battles, both in the competitive scene and just in playthroughs. One layer poisons grounded Pokemon and during battle, and a second layer badly poisons them. An extra mechanic for Toxic Spikes that Poison-type Pokemon appreciate is that not only can they not be poisoned by them, but they also absorb them and remove them if they land on them. Additionally, the new Poison-type Pokemon added are actually pretty solid. The fully evolved ones were Roserade, Skunk Tank, Grapeon, and Toxic Rogue. None of them were broken game changers, but all of them are at least solidly decent Pokemon, with Skunk Tank and Drapion having the fun aspect of only having one weakness. So Gen 4 benefited the poison type, but overall it still wasn't that great. Remember, it's still only super effective against the grass type, and then resisted by 4, it does nothing to the steel type. It still needed quite a bit more help, but then in Gen 5, Still didn't really get it. The new fully evolved poison types were Scolipede, Garboder, and Amoongus. Not weak Pokemon, but not game changing. Amoongus would go on to have the biggest impact in the competitive double scene, largely thanks to Rage Power. The new moves were alright though. Acid Spray and Clear Smog aren't that exciting, but Coil is a pretty good boosting move that Serpentine Pokemon like Milotic and Superior like to take advantage of. Sludge Wave became a nice, stronger alternative to Sludge Bomb, and Venoshock can be devastatingly powerful when used on a poisoned target. I personally have used it as an in-between move on special attacking team members before they can get Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave. But still, these poison type moves were only super effective against grass types, so they had limited viability. Black Twin Y2 also added Rocks, the first poison type specialist added since Janine in Gen 2, which is kinda wild to think about. That 
took a while. So for the first five generations of Pokemon, the poison type was just yeah. not that great. Its offensive coverage was so narrow that most poison type Pokemon that found success didn't even carry poison type moves. It started as the most abundant type, but then petered off into honestly obscurity. But then generation six happened, and Game Freak finally threw the poison type of bone. Several bones, actually. The bones of fairies. Sorry, that was a little dark. This became the new type chart for poison type Pokemon. For the first time since generation one, poison was strong against more than one type, gaining an advantage over the new fairy type, plus a resistance to it as well. This was a massive deal. I talked about it in other videos about how the fairy type was created to serve the Tutor move that 
Sinister, and Shell Sidearm is Galarian Slowbro's very good signature move that can use either its physical or special attack. The new poison Pokemon are Galarian Weezing, Galarian Slowbro, Galarian Slow King, Toxel, Toxtricity, not for days. and Eternity. To be perfectly honest, I don't really know how good these Pokemon are in the competitive scene, but at the very least, they have good stats. Speaking of good stats, if you do not count Ultra Beasts as legendaries, then Eternatus is the first Poison-type legendary Pokemon. And whether it makes it the last type to get a legendary Pokemon depends on whether you count Mythicals or not. Is Genesect a legendary? I think so, but if you don't think so, then I uh, think it's still like not a bug one. So don't count Mythicals and Ultra But look, it's Eternatus. On the topic of Eternatus, amusingly, the Poison-type, which has been kind of absent since Gen 1, can now boost that it has the strongest Pokemon of all time. Kinda. Eternamax Eternatus has the absolutely bonkers base stat total of 1,125, which is clearly broken beyond belief. But this doesn't really count. These stats are only used for the four-on-one battle in the climax of with those stats in battle. So like, not really the strongest Pokemon, but it kinda is. Also the poison specialist is Clara from the Isle of Armor, who is revealed in the Galarian Star Tournament to have become a minor league poison type gym leader. And thus concludes the journey of the poison type so far. It started extremely abundant, and then became terrible, and then got a bit better, but is still definitely not one of the best types out there. It's one of the strangest journeys any type has been on. Thanks so much for watching, and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon for helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. Alright, that's all I have for now. So until next time, fans. Gotta catch them all.
Let's go, let's go. Tap four, let's go, let's go. I assume it's something bad, otherwise it wouldn't have been thrown into the, the daycare, so I'll take that too. Holy shit! I don't know if I use Sharpedo over Lantern or the King but Sharpedo's really powerful. Getting a dark type what it is, John. There it is. Wait a second, what? Oh, oh my gosh! 